Hi, my name is Brady Drummond, and I'm a junior at Belt Valley High School. In 2015, I had the opportunity to participate in the fifth grade Charlie Russell Essay Contest, and I was the county grand prize winner. This experience really meant a lot to me, and it has helped propel me into being the writer that I am today. I believe Charlie is such an important figure in Montana's past. His portrayal of whites, natives, and their interactions really tells a story. And I hope that everyone gets the opportunity to experience Charlie the way that I did. Why don't we go take a look at where Charlie would spend hours of his days creating. Charlie didn't start working in his studio until after 1903, which is when the studio construction began. Before the studio, he painted and crafted in the living room of his and Nancy's house. The studio, built from telephone poles and modeled after the log cabin Charlie had lived in with his good friend Jake Hoover, was built just outside the house. Charlie was afraid it would be thought of as an eyesore, considering they lived in the very wealthy part of Great Falls. The Trigg family, good friends of the Russells, was sure that the cabin would not cause any issues. And if it did, the neighbors would just have to get used to it. The studio provided a peaceful, quiet atmosphere where Charlie had plenty of time and room to finish his paintings. It was full of objects and mementos used to spark his creativity. Much of Charlie's work supports a theme of the coming of industrialization and how it would change the lives of Native Americans forever. In this pen and ink drawing, a Native man is surrounded by signs of the industrialized world. There are fence posts, telephone poles, a smokestack, and a city in the background. In the sky, Native American hunters are chasing a herd of buffalo. The man is possibly dreaming of the way things used to be in a time when there were no fence posts partitioning the land, when buffalo were free to roam. The buffalo skull resting near him on the ground suggests he is thinking of the dying culture he once lived by. He barely notices the woman passing, who does not seem to understand him. This drawing shows the way that Russell empathized with the Native Americans. Russell was acutely aware of the contrast between white genteel American culture and Native American culture. Here, he illustrates the differences and similarities between women and their lifestyles and their roles as mothers in two distinct civilizations. The Native American woman in the painting is probably Cree. At the time of the drawing, the Cree did not have a reservation and were dependent on selling their crafts in Great Falls. The woman is carrying a polished buffalo horn hat rack to sell to tourists or residents of the town. The Cree were known for traveling the plains, picking up buffalo casings, and making objects out of them for sale, such as buffalo horn chairs and hat racks. Charlie did commissioned work and advertisement illustrations along with his art. The Russells had to make a living in order to put food on the table. So Charlie had to work for others before he became a world famous artist with his own art. An old story and lifesaver were completed as an advertisement for the Lifesaver Seat Lock Company of Minneapolis and Winnipeg. The seat lock or clamp, which fastened to the wagon box as a safety device, was designed and invented by Victor Haidloff. Charlie was a friend of Mr. Haidloff and volunteered to paint the watercolor to be used for advertising. An old story shows a team of horses hitched up to a runaway wagon as a horseless carriage comes up from the rear. The driver is thrown from the seat and the women and children are being thrown around as the horses run off the edge of the road. The seat has come loose from the box of the wagon. The vehicle and barbed wire fence are examples of the intrusion of the modern era, as was seen in The Last of His Race. The Lifesaver also shows a team of horses frightened by an approaching automobile. The team is bolting off the road. However, the driver has the horses under control and is still seated on the wagon seat thanks to the Lifesaver seat lock. Both paintings used social commentary about the passing of the West and the technological changes being made whether Charlie liked it or not. Friends of the Russells would often visit Charlie while he was working or when he needed a break. 
Charlie spent most of his time entertaining with stories around a campfire or playing with neighborhood children, even when he was supposed to be hard at work. Nancy also liked to entertain. She had many guests over for dinner. Why don't you head down to the home and take a look around at where the Russells live?